Hi, I'm Samben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled Gapped, Ungapped, and Distributed Gap Toroids in Power Electronics. Now, the presentation includes some examples of commercial devices, which are just shown as an example. There is no endorsement or recommendation implied here. Also, I'm not affiliated with any of the companies that I'm showing their products. Now, there are different types of toroids. We have a ungapped ferrite toroid, looks like that. And then we have a gapped ferrite toroid. And then we have a distributed gap or iron powder uh, toroids, which have in fact a ferrite, which is sort of mixed with a non-magnetic material so as to reduce the permeability of the ferrite material. Ferrite permeability uh, would be, or soft ferrite would be in the area of say 2000 to 4000, while here by mixing it with some inert uh, material, uh, we can uh, accomplish 100 uh, relative permeability and even lower 26 or whatever. So, what are the availability of these uh, toroids? Well, the ungapped ferrites and distributed cores are really distributed gap uh, cores, are really made by many, many uh, companies. The gapped ferrite cores are really uh, made by only few manufacturers you can find and the selection is uh, very small. But uh, good news, it's really easy to make your own gapped uh, ferrite toroid because uh, soft ferrite are really easy to machine. And so if you get a ungapped ferrite uh, toroid, you can just uh, saw it and get a uh, gap, air gap that you'd like to have. Now, what are the application of uh, toroids in power electronics, it'll be transformer. This will be primarily the ungapped ferrite. And then inductors for PWM converters. Here we do have to store energy in the core or in the inductor, I should say. So therefore we need a other distributed gap type of a toroid or a gapped uh, ferrite toroid. Then we have another class of inductors that are used for resonant converters. And these primarily, if you use toroid, uh, it'll be a gapped ferrite, uh, the best choice. If you use a distributed gap, usually uh, the losses will be much higher. And we will talk about it later on. Let's uh, cover a little bit uh, the magnetics involved here. Basically, a ferrite will have a BH curve, it's a black one, and there is a saturation region, and then the slope here is the permeability, uh, B, the rift B over H. And in practical operation, when you need to store energy, you include a air gap uh, of certain lengths, I'll call it L sub G, here it is. And um, in this configuration, we know that B is constant. That is the same B uh, is sort of found the magnetic flux density is found anywhere in the ferrite and in the gap, same value, except for some fringes here, which I'm not considering. However, the magnetic field is not the same and in fact, there is a big difference. The sum of the magnetic fields within the gap and in the ferrite is this uh, N times I over LE. LE is the magnetic path length. And uh, then we have that the ratio between the magnetic field within the gap to the magnetic field within the ferrite is like the ratio of the permeabilities. Now the gap is air and ferrite is the relative permeability is uh, thousands. So this ratio is very high, which means that uh, the magnetic field here is very high. This is typical of any gapped uh, ferrite material, of course. So we do add, add a gap and after adding the gap, the slope that is the relative permeability becomes smaller and therefore we see a curve that looks like that. Okay, the 
relative or the permeability of the complete structure is about the ratio of the magnetic path length over the length of the gap and this would be correct for cases in which the relative permeability is or the equivalent permeability is uh, much smaller than the original ferrite permeability which is in most of cases so we add a gap mu is smaller and the curve looks like now like that so what did we gain what we gain is the following if we have a certain current uh, flowing through the winding here across uh, around the toroid uh, it'll build up a certain h i'm talking about the total h and then in the case of um, the ferrite uh, we are say here we are already here approaching uh, saturation while if the permeability is low then uh, we are only here that's the lower magnetic flux density so we are uh, able to fit in higher current uh, before the unit uh, goes into saturation so this is the idea of adding a gap and of course you can calculate how much you have to reduce the permeability for a given uh, project a given design now the bh curve does have hysteresis and the shown here is say after uh, reducing the mu this is already with the uh, gap unit and what we see here is that um, if there is a dc value and then there is a ripple an ac ripple then we are here uh, moving around a so-called minor loop here the area of course is uh, related to energy loss so that the area times the frequency is related to the power loss uh, warming up or heating up of the core okay so here we distinguish between various parameters let's talk about them uh, this is the peak value that we are going to reach related to this peak here and then there is a delta b here this is the swing of the magnetic flux density and then we have uh, the uh, current which is responsible for the magnetic uh, field and um, as it turns out this point uh, we'll see it in a minute is uh, uh, related to the peak value so let's look some of the relationship here i can write uh, v as a function of db dt here it is or l di dt now taking the integral here from 0 to uh, the b peak and from 0 to i peak i get this equation which shows that uh, you can uh, calculate the peak magnetic flux density value from the i peak that you reach this is the i peak times n over n and a e is the cross section of this uh, element n is the number of turns that you'll have on the core so this is regarding uh, the b peak and obviously you like to make sure that the b peak is below saturation because at saturation we are losing the permeability and uh, uh, you are losing the inductance as a matter of fact now another way to look at it if uh, i have a certain voltage imposed on the inductor then i can relate the voltage to the change in magnetic flux de density and i come up with this equation which says that the uh, change in the magnetic flux density delta b is related to the voltage on the inductor times delta t the time that it is sustained uh, and again divided by n times v sub b which is the uh, area here so we have now the b peak related to the peak value of the current and then we have delta peak which is here related to the voltage across the inductor but uh, i can also relate it to the changes in the current the delta i 
I can then take this relationship which we have seen before and then uh, either take the integ integral from 0 to, a, to the maximum value or from say b1 to b2 and uh, this will be corresponding to a current from i1 to i2 and therefore we are going to see here this relationship which means that delta b is related to delta i times l over again uh, this nv. So we have now all these relationships and the question is what are we going to do with them? Well first of all uh, if we have a certain material, and I'm showing here 3620 uh, ferrous cube, and the reason I'm showing this one because they have ferrite toroids with air gap already made, so you can order a toroid, a ferrite toroid with a gap. So this uh, soft ferrite material has this history, this uh, loop and uh, ob this, this is for two temperature, this is 25, this is 100, and obviously you'd like to have B peak has to be, say, up to here, this would be the maximum value, and B peak is related to the I peak. Now, on the other hand, delta B is uh, affecting the losses, the core losses, and this is based on the uh, study of uh, Steinmetz, uh, and this is the Steinmetz equation uh, for these plots. Since this is a power equation in a log-log scale, these are straight lines. Uh, we see this is frequency, this is flux density, it is in Gauss. Uh, if you like to work in Tesla, which I like, then you have to multiply it by 10 to the minus 4. So this is 100 milli Tesla, 1 Gauss. Is 100 milli Tesla, and it shows here that say uh, 100 uh, kilohertz. Uh, let's see, in this case, 20 kilohertz uh, switching with uh, a span of 100 milli Tesla uh, will cause a uh, dissipation or power loss of 100 milliwatt per centimeter square, which, uh, by the way, is kilowatt per meter, I mean it's not square, it's a cube, and it corresponds to kilowatt to meter cube, okay? Sometimes it's uh, defined this way. Now, there is a confusion about this B. Now this B is not a total, it's not the peak, it is the deviation. That is just the uh, delta B. So this B, in fact, uh, these plots are measure or made, or these plots are made from measurements around zero with sinusoidal e excitation. Uh, we use it also for uh, non-sinusoidal excitation and also uh, for uh, the case that uh, we have a DC bias. It's only an approximation. There are some studies that show how to do a correction. Uh, this is not really the main subject of this uh, presentation. So, be careful, this is not a total B, it is B uh, hat, that is the peak value of the sinusoidal waveform, and in the case of a, a triangular waveform, it will be that delta B over 2. And this delta B itself is, as we have seen, uh, V delta T and VE, and uh, again, the peak value as I've shown before. So let's have a look at simple example. Uh, we have here a back converter. Uh, this is an example of the current. Uh, the ripple here is pretty high. So the voltage across the inductor will look like this. During on time, it's V in minus V out doesn't say here V out, it should be here V out, and during um, the off time it is the V out or minus V out, uh, assuming the voltage drop on the diode is zero, so therefore delta B is V T off uh, this and uh, from which we get the delta B, while 
the peak value of B will be the I peak times I peak, this is this value now, um, over uh, this uh, NV. And again, we can also expre express delta B uh, not as a function of the voltage, but as a function of the ripple. Now these two are really independent in a way because they depend on the value of the inductor. That is, if the inductor is very, very large, uh, you'll have a very small uh, delta I and uh, therefore delta B would be very small and consequently you don't have to worry too much about the losses. That is the case of uh, a, a DC with little ripple. And if this delta I is large, um, the dissipation or the power loss could be uh, meaningful and could be too high and so it, these are two independent issues. First, we worry about the saturation and then we have to worry about the delta B, which is related to the losses. Now, there's another issue here, I'm just mentioning it, that uh, the gapped in uh, toroid or gapped ferrite in general, uh, since it has a very high magnetic field uh, within the gap, uh, first of all, there are fringes here, so you wouldn't like to uh, put uh, the turns here around this area because uh, of the magnetic field you have and therefore the resistance of the wire will be very high and uh, it uh, actually can damage the wire here. I've seen many times that they actually the insulation actually burned out when the winding was um, above the gap. And then you have some uh, radiation coming off of this thing. So this situation is not very good from the EMI uh, point of view. So that's one of the uh, drawbacks of this configuration. Now, another issue is that the inductance is going down as uh, the current is going up. And this is because uh, as the current is going up, uh, we are moving on the BH curve and the permeability is becoming smaller and therefore uh, the inductance uh, for a given structure uh, which is already uh, built, uh, the inductance will be smaller as the current is increasing. So this is uh, what we see here. Now here is a um, comparison between two toroids of the same side, the same AL, that is the same permeability. One is made of a soft ferrite 3620 uh, ferrous cube and one is a MPP which is a powder core. This is in fact the material, the best material for high frequency and lowest uh, losses at high frequency uh, available. So what we see here is that the blue one which is the MPP is going down with the um, current, this is the magnetic field, and the 3620 goes down but in a steeper way. So this is one of the uh, drawbacks that, that you have to limit yourself to this value and the drop in the inductance of the um, ferrite will be a bit larger. So this is one comparison. Another comparison, which is really the highlight here, is losses. If you compare the losses of MPP to the uh, ferrite material, and I've marked two. One is the gap, which is a ferrite material with a gap, 100 kilohertz, this is this red line. And one is the MPP, 100 kilohertz, which is this line. And this is again, uh, the deviation delta B in milli tesla. So if we look at these two points, uh, we see that MPP 100 kilohertz in this case is already 100 milliwatt per centimeter cube, while the gapped ferrite is one decade lower. So this is very significant. So in terms of losses, uh, there is no question that the ferrite 
losses are much, much lower than the powder core losses. This is, by the way, a function of the permeability because as the permeability of the MPP goes down, uh, there is less magnetic material there, you might say, and therefore this effect uh, becomes of less. I'll show it in a couple of slides uh, farther ahead. So, in PWM converter then, uh, usually we start the core selection looking at uh, the peak value of uh, magnetic flux density so as not to approach a saturation. But this will be the first step uh, then, because if the ripple is very small, then everything will be fine. But if the ripple is high, you do have to worry about delta B and uh, whether uh, you are, uh, the dissipation is acceptable. And uh, otherwise you have to redesign, which would mean that you need a larger core. It's a larger cross-section area or larger window, uh, less turns. Uh, that is, this uh, product uh, has to be larger in order to reduce the delta B, given uh, delta I and L. Of course, if you change these, then of course uh, you can also comply with the requirement of the dissipation. Let me just mention one point which I did not, and that is that a good number to remember is 100 milliwatt per centimeter cube. This is from experience uh, a good number. Of course, uh, it's not rigid. Uh, in some designs, it could be higher or lower, but uh, it, I found that uh, uh, usually you, you end up with this around this number because um, what happens is that if the core is larger, obviously the power dissipation is larger because it, this is for a volume. So the, the larger the core, the larger the volume, but then the surface area becomes also larger and therefore the unit can dissipate more heat. So this is a good number, but if you are concerned about uh, efficiencies very much, then probably you would like to go above lower now. Comparing now uh, more closely the losses of a ferrite, and I'm looking at the, again the 3620, and the two most, uh, say, popular uh, cores uh, for switch mode converters uh, operating at fairly high frequency, we see that, say, for the ferrite at 100 kilohertz, 100 milli tesla, uh, we have about 60 milliwatt per centimeter cube. Cool mu, 100 kilohertz, one kilo gauss, which is again 100 uh, milli tesla, is 1,000. But it's a big, big difference. Now MPP, as I've said, is one of the best one, and here it's already 60, the permeability, uh, relative permeability is 60. So as I've said, uh, losses are a bit lower. And here again, if we look at the one kilogram, 100 milli Tesla, we see that uh, this is 100, 200, about three to 400. So again, uh, it's, it's much higher than the, this material. So there is no question that when you have a high ripple, the ferrite material is, is much better in terms of loss. There's no question about that. Now what about resonant converters? Well, in resonant converters, uh, we don't have DC current in the inductor, uh, usually. It'll be AC, so the peak value is the AC value and therefore the delta B over 2 is really the peak value. So here uh, we just have the delta B which is causing losses and uh, this is the limitation and uh, normally you will not go to even close to the saturation because um, the losses will be just too high unless you're walking at very very low frequency which is impractical. So in resonant converters this, the uh, rule is that you have to look at delta B, uh, the differences, the peak value is dictating the 
delta b, and then uh, it will be limited by the power dissipated uh, by the device. Now, gapped ferritoroids are available, I've already mentioned that. Uh, one company that makes them is Ferrous Cube. Selection is not great, unless I have, I have missed something. And uh, it's pretty much this is what we see here. Uh, here is uh, the core, and here's the gap. And here you see different sizes and different permeabilities. And um, of course, uh, each one has its own A, A sub L. Uh, and uh, they are all these uh, ferrox cube uh, elements are all made of this 3C, 3C20 material. Again, I've already mentioned that um, you really can make your own, uh, maybe not for production. Production, you can order it. Uh, you just take a uh, ferrite uh, toroid and, and then you can saw in here, it, it's machinable and uh, there is really no problem in doing that. Also available are toroid, gapped toroid of other materials. One of them is the amorphous or nanocrystalline material. Uh, it's just one example, there are other companies like uh, Vacuum Schmelzer. This is a met glass, it's a subsidiary of uh, Hitachi. And um, here is the core losses, it's 100 kilohertz. Unfortunately, here it's in watt per kilogram. So you'll have to work out the relationship uh, to what is more common, which is the milliwatt per centimeter cube or centimeter cube or kilowatt per a meter cube, which is the same thing, but here it's kilogram. So you'll have to figure out this uh, relationship. Now, the advantage of these core is primarily the fact that they have a very high saturation magnetic flux density. This is 1.56. Here it is, 1.56. And this is uh, compared to say 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.4 for ferrite, soft ferrite. So you can go to very high B peak, provided of course that the losses are acceptable. So cases in which you have high DC and low ripple uh, can benefit from such a core, because then you can utilize it to fairly high magnetic flux density, very high Bs, and if the uh, delta B is fairly small, then uh, you're in good shape because then the losses will be okay. So this is the, the main advantage of, of this particular uh, material in this connection. This material has other characteristics which are useful in other for other application, for example, it has a square uh, hysteresis loop, uh, which is good for other application like switches or magnetic amplifiers, which I'm not going into in this presentation. So what are the conclusions? The conclusions are that the gap ferrite cores, uh, I'm talking here about toroids, but it holds for any other shape, of course, E-core, ETD, or any other shape, RM, uh, they have a lower magnetic losses than the po iron powder. Now, gap ferrite cores are really recommended in the case of high ripple cases and especially in resonant converters. If you uh, like to be the inductor for a resonant converter, then a gap ferrite is, is the way to go in terms of losses. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it interesting and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.